Picking up this problem from step six, so we determined that the dead load is 3,224 kip feet. So now we're going to move on to step seven. We're going to find the distribution factor uh, for this system. And remember, to do this with our moment, we can use a formula. And so our formula is going to be that this distribution factor is equal to the girder spacing divided by 5.5. In this case, the girder spacing is 16 feet. And we divide that by 5.5, which gives us a distribution factor of 2.91. Uh, step eight is going to be to find that live load information. And remember, we have a table for our live load that we're going to use that's based on that HS uh, 20-44 Ashto truck loading. Um, and so that's already been solved for you. So you can look that up. Remember our span length here is 80 feet. So we'll come down here to our 80 foot information for our span length of 80 feet. And remember we don't need the shear information. We need the maximum bending moment in kip foot and that is 580. So we'll use that here, 580 kip foot for our 80 foot span. All right, step nine is the impact factor. And we can use that same equation we were using for our shear loading for a factored reaction. Um, the impact factor is 50 over the span length, which in this case is 80 plus 125. And so we get an impact factor of 0 0.24. So now we're all ready to put it into our equation um, in order to find um, our factored moment here. And just to take a look back to our steps here, remember our factored design moment equation. Uh, we're using um, our information that we've gathered so far, our total dead load that we found from step uh, 6. We have our distribution factor, we have our impact factor, and we've got the live load. So we're going to put those in um, using our other factor information from Ashtel to come up with a total factor design moment. So let's go ahead and write that down for step 10. Again, the formula that we're going to use is this 1.3 uh, times the dead load plus 1.67 times that distribution factor times 1 plus the impact factor times the live load. So plugging in all the values that I found, I wind up with factor design moment 1.3 times this 3224 kip foot plus 1.67 times the 2.91 times 1 plus the 0 0.24, 1.24 uh, times 580 kip feet. And turning through all that math, uh, I wind up with a factor design moment of 8,734.8 kip feet. If you want to go to a whole number here, that's fine. Uh, 8,735 kip feet. That'll work. Either way you want to do it, we do lots of things to one decimal place, so if you want to keep it there, that's fine as well. All right, for step 11, we're going to do our compact section checks um, for the flange and the web for this particular girder. Remember, we're looking at this W33 by 118. Um, for our checks, we can just use the information that's given to us in the back. Um, with our girder beam information. So let's take a look at that. For this W33 by 118, we're going to come over here to the compact section criteria and check our numbers, pull our values off of here. So for our flange uh, check, it's the value is 7.76. For our web check, it's 54.5. So let's write those values down and we'll see how they check. So for the flange, we have 7.76. And for the web, we have 54.5 for our section checks. And yeah, they're both going to work. 
Uh, this is less than the 9.19 required, and this is less than or equal to the 86 required. And remember, if you're pulling this prefab girder off the table, it's always going to work. But we go through this um, step just to make sure you remember that you will have to do those calculations if you are using plate girder and building that up yourself. All right, last step, is the beam going to work? So let's go back to that girder table and pick off a value for the plastic modulus, uh, the Z sub X from this table that I'm using. So again, to my girder information for the W33 by 118, I come over here to my X axis plastic modulus, Z sub X in inches cubed, and I wind up with um, a, a value of 415 inches cubed for my plastic modulus from this girder. So let's write that down. 415 inches cubed. My job now is to check and see if that's going to be enough for what I figured out for my factor design moment. And just to show that step here, we're on step 12. So we read our z sub x and now we're going to check it against what we really need based on the factor design moment we calculated. And so we'll figure out that z required by taking that factor design moment in kip feet. Uh, we'll convert it to kip inches and then divide it by the yield strength of steel, which we used in our step one, uh, was given to us as 50 kips per inches squared. So let's check it out and see if that will work. So this is gonna be our Z required. And we're gonna take that uh, factor design moment that, was get, that we calculated 8735 kip feet, convert that to kip inches, so 12 inches per one foot, and then divide that by the 50, slide that up a bit, 50 uh, kips per inches squared. All right, so we plug that all into the calculator, come up with a whole number. Uh, I get 2096, uh, and that is inches cubed. And so now we want to check that number versus the z sub x that we found on our chart. Um, and so, yeah, check out this is z sub x. Remember, we want our z sub x to be greater than or equal to our z required for the girder to work. Um, so, is that true? No, look at this. We have 415 inches cubed. That is not greater than or equal to 2096 inches cubed. In fact, that is much, much less. Uh, so that is not going to work. So a follow on question here, and this was asked on the test, is what girder would work? As we discussed, if you pick a different girder, that's gonna change things as you look through um, your equations, but just kind of taking a quick look at our table, you know, do we have any kind of Z sub X that has this sort of magnitude? Um, and as we look through our plastic modulus, uh, nothing on this page is going to work. We're going to have to get to a much beefier girder uh, to find something that could work for us. So I think it's on that first page. Yeah, we get some uh, plastic modulus is into the 2000 here um, at the W36 uh, level. So maybe something around the W36 by 487 or something like that to start with and then see if we could get what kind of number we would get in the end of our calculation. So that's one way to make a recommendation about a beam. But the bottom line here is that this does not work.